Assalamu alaikum dear students and welcome to the 30th session of the KIPS Distance Learning Program Current Affairs Newspaper Roundup Session. I am your host Sharukh Hayat and the topic for today is Hydropolitics between India and Pakistan or Hydropolitics in South Asia generally or otherwise also known as Hydropolitics on Pakistan's Indus River Basin. So the famous writer, uh, analyst on Pakistan, Western analyst on Pakistan, Alaton Levin, read, uh, wrote, Assalamu alaikum dear students and welcome to the 30th session of the KIPS Distance Learning Program Current Affairs News Program of Session. I am your host Sharukh Hazir and the topic for today is Hydropolitics in South Asia or Hydropolitics between India and Pakistan also otherwise known as Hydropolitics in Pakistan's Indus River Basin. So the famous analyst, Western analyst on Pakistan, Anatol Levin wrote in his famous book, Pakistan a Hard Country, that Pakistan is a gamble on the Indus. What that means is that Pakistan is too much reliant upon the Indus River Basin for the source of its water, for the source of its electricity, and for the source of its one of its largest sectors of the economy, which is agriculture. Pakistan is primarily an agrarian economy. In 1950s and 60s, 60% 60 of our GDP was dependent upon agriculture. Now that has reduced to 18%, which is still a significant portion of our entire GDP. It also provides uh, employment to 60% of the labor of Pakistan, which is substantial. However, uh, Pakistan's water situation is getting worse day by day. There are a lot of red flags that have been raised by various international and domestic experts on Pakistan's worsening water woes. Now let's look at what some of these factors and uh, measurements are. So water scarcity has become an impending issue for Pakistan. The per capita availability of water in Pakistan has reduced from more than 5100 cubic meter per capita to less than 1000 cubic meter per capita from 1959 to 2018. Now that's not primarily due to a reduction in motor, water but more so because of a dramatic increase in our population which has increased more than three times in the last 60 years. Moreover Pakistan is the seventh worst stress a water stressed country in the world according to the World Resource Institute based in Washington, United States. And on top of all of that, global warming and climate change are starting to have their impact upon the water systems and portable water networks in Pakistan. So for example, the uh, Pakistan has one of the highest concentrations of glaciers in its north and many of them are under the set of melting away due to increasing temperatures due to climate change which will definitely bring uh, you know very dramatic flash floods to Pakistan with the capacity to cause massive damage, loss of life, loss of property, loss to GDP in the immediate term and reducing the overall availability of water in the long term. Moreover, on second note, the precipitation patterns or the rainfall patterns in Pakistan, especially during the critical monsoon season, which is essential for growing very important crops, are also becoming irregular and unreliable. Now that is a direct hit to Pakistan's food security. Pakistan's food security is already precarious. We import quite some uh, food from all around the world, including India. And if we are unable to increase the current uh, land under irrigation and improve the quality of our food production system, we are only going forward into a very dramatic uh, famine situation into the future. Moreover, Pakistan has less than 150 large dams. By large dams, I mean a dam more than 15 feet or more height. Whereas China, for example, has 87,000 large dams and India has more than, uh, you know, 4,700 large dams. Which is why Pakistan also has one of the lowest uh, water storage capacity in, in the entire region, which stands at less than 30 days whereas the world bank suggests that each country must have a water storage capacity of at least 120 days australia has a water storage capacity of nearly 900 days canada has a water 
storage capacity of 1200 days india also has a water storage capacity of 150 days despite the fact that india's per capita availability of water is much lower than pakistan and stands at nearly 250 cubic meter uh, per capita whereas pakistan's is 980 both of which count as water stressed countries Moreover, there is massive mismanagement of water resources within Pakistan. Now, this domestic mismanagement can be best characterized by looking at the figures of the total flow rate data in Pakistan. So, overall, on average, 145 million acre feet of water flows through Pakistan's Indus River Basin each year. Out of this 145, 70 or 75 million acre feet of water flows to the Arabian Sea. Out of the remaining 70, <coughs> Uh, million acre feet only 35 million acre feet of water is utilized effectively whereas 35 uh, million acre feet of water is wasted every year in Pakistan now this means that Pakistan has the lowest water efficiency water use efficiency in the entire region which is less than 30 percent now these are very dramatic numbers and this calls for massive concern now why is there such wastage of water in pakistan that is the next obvious and critical question well it's because of the very obsolete irrigation system in pakistan which is mostly dependent upon flood irrigation which causes salinity water logging and unlined massive canals that waste a lot of water due to water seepage and a lot of water theft and other uh, irregular and ineffective practices which do not consider water as an important and scarce resource. So let's look at the hydropolitics between India and Pakistan and why due to Pakistan's impending water crisis the hydropolitics has gained increasing attention and increasing importance in the case of Pakistan and India. So the roots of hydropolitics or conflict of water between Pakistan and India lie in the very nature of the independent struggle and the way that Pakistan became independent. So the boundary line that was drawn by the Boundary Commission basically divided the rivers between the two countries as well. So the majority of the command areas, that is the area of a river where you can draw the most water and easily lie in Pakistan where the headworks from where all of the tributaries of the Indus River originate lie in India. Now this is a very problematic situation as I'm sure you can understand because Pakistan and India from the get-go became mortal rivals of each other which is why India being the upper riparian state in hydropolitics between India and Pakistan has the upper hand and can exert a lot of hydro pressure so to speak on Pakistan which is one of the main sources of Pakistan's long-standing concerns and fears vis-a-vis -vis India's water terrorism against Pakistan. So in 1948 for example Pakistan, uh, India stopped the waters of Pakistan coming from the in river Indus which really etched into the memories of Pakistan's water bureaucracy and overall leadership that India could at any time threaten Pakistan's water security and push Pakistan into a deep uh, drought and uh, famine situation if India wants. Now due to that finally after a lot of nearly 10 years worth of negotiation between India and Pakistan with the involvement of World Bank the Indus Water Treaty was signed in 1960. Now let's have an overview of the but, uh, of what the how the Indus Water Treaty divided the water between Pakistan and India. So what the Indus Water Treaty did was it conducted an amputation surgery upon the Indus River Basin by dividing the six tributaries of the Indus River Basin between the two countries. So the eastern tributaries including uh, Ravi, Satluj and Chenab were given to India, awarded to India, whereas the western tributaries Jhelum, uh, you know, Chenab and uh, uh, you know, Indus was given to Pakistan. Whereas on the same end, India retained the ability to make uh, hydroelectric and development projects on the western rivers that were originally gifted or you know awarded to Pakistan under the Indus Water Treaty. That means that India under the Indus Water Treaty has the ability to make a run of the river water development projects and hydroelectric projects on the western tributaries that originally belonged to Pakistan under the Indus Water Treaty. Now India has been going on to make more projects upon uh, these rivers and the, uh, India plans to create several more projects upon the Indus River Basin 
on the western tributaries which belong to Pakistan. Now, this is completely legal under the Indus Water Treaty. And uh, only the conditions that India must follow to make these development projects are very clear. For example, India absolutely cannot divert the course of water or reduce the amount of water or you know dam any amount of water on the western rivers. All the projects that it uh, wants to make on those rivers must be run of the river, which means that the natural flow rate of the river can be used by India to generate electricity. Now this is a very technical sort of situation in this case and the Indus Water Treaty in reality is a very technical and minute document that tries to contain all conflicts over water between India and Pakistan down to the very deepest detail. As they say that the devil lies in the details and that is exactly what India has done in order to exploit the Indus Water Treaty and threaten Pakistan's water security. So for example, India started the Baglehar hydroelectric project in uh, you know on the uh, Jhelum River um, in 1990s and that was a problem because the Baglehar project wasn't entirely following the uh, you know rules and regulations of the Indus Water Treaty that means that there were some move movable structures within the project design of the Baglehar um, hydroelectric project that were not allowed under the Indus Water Treaty which is why Pakistan took India to the World Bank, to the Arbitration Tribunal of the World Bank under the Indus Water Treaty regime to prevent India from building the Baglehar hydroelectric project. And after ex extensive uh, you know, um, wranglings and extensive negotiations and technical inspections of the project, the World Bank in 2004 announced the verdict that the Baglehar Dam is uh, legal under the Indus Water Treaty and India was allowed to make the dam but India was also forced to make some key structural changes and remove any movable structure from the project. So when both of these countries came back from the decision, they both announced a victory. Pakistan said that we were victorious because we uh, forced the India to reconsider design whereas India said that we were victorious because we forced Pakistan to allow us to make the dam or the hydroelectric project in the first place. Now that was one of the most contentious uh, hydropolitic issue between India and Pakistan. Moreover, the second important hydroelectric project is the Kishan Ganga hydroelectric project which India is developing upon the Jhelum, uh, actually the Neelam River which is in India known as the Kishan Ganga River and uh, that uh, basically project is also uh, a project that is contentious under the Indus Water Treaty regulation which mean that there are, uh, what India intends to do with this project is try to divert the course of the water of the Kishan Ganga or the Neelam River from one point and to another and then return the water back to the river at a further uh, downstream point. This is once again obviously an, a violation of the Indus Water Treaty. Pakistan has taken India to the World Bank Arbitration Tribunal once again and the decision is pending before it. Now, we're not really sure what the World Bank will uh, conclude in this matter, but the fact of the matter remains that India's actions upon the western rivers of the Indus River Basin are certainly concerning Pakistan. So let's look at Pakistan's fears vis-a-vis -vis India's water terrorism towards Pakistan. Well, first of all, India intends to build a lot of projects upon the western tributaries that originally belonged to Pakistan. Now, India is allowed to do that, but India absolutely refuses to share the details and the designs of this project. Now, that is a clear uh, violation of the Indus Water Street. Secondly, with the total amount of projects that India intends to build on the western rivers, they can collectively perhaps give India the power to either stop Pakistan's water during low uh, tide season or flood Pakistan during the high tide monsoon season. This is very deep concern for Pakistan because that could uh, threaten Pakistan's strategic stability and national security interests. Moreover, um, India absolutely refuses to share the flow rate data of the Indus River Basin or any kind of uh, you know project design or details. Now this is clearly a lack of trust between the two sides and this trust deficit is creating a sort of water uh, security concerns and water insecurity for Pakistan. So what uh, are the recent developments that we have seen in the case of water terrorism and hydropolitics between Pakistan? So even though the Indus Water Treaty 
has been a successful treaty because it has survived four wars between India and Pakistan and both countries have not directly violated it, its credibility has been put under massive question in recent times. So for example, uh, in 2019, the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi said that blood and water do not run together. Moreover, the Indian Army Chief also said that we are considering, uh, you know, shelving or um, throwing the Indus Water Treaty into the dustbin and having an Indus Water Treaty 2.0. Moreover, in Modi has also said that Jammu and Kashmir alone can provide electricity to the entire India, which shows the kind of attitude that the Modi administration has towards Kashmir. It wants to use Kashmir as a source of electricity by building various hydroelectric projects on the rivers that are originally Pakistan's under the Indus Water Street. So what uh, is the kind of way forward that we can look towards as well? The first and the most important thing in this case is to kind of build trust between the two powers and this trust building exercise can be initiated by the sharing of data, flow rate data between Pakistan and India and by installing telemetry flow rate data measurement uh, you know, machinery on both sides of the border. Moreover, India also needs to share the designs of all the projects that it intends to build upon the western rivers of the Indus River Basin and finally perhaps it is time to go back to the drawing board and perhaps renegotiate the Indus Water Treaty because in the rest of the world where there are water sharing agreements between countries, they are not as, uh, you know, divisional as the Indus Water Treaty is. There are more cooperative water sharing formulas that we have example of, especially from the Nile River Basin that we can import into Indus River Basin and perhaps increase the uh, water sharing efficiency between India and Pakistan. So that is some food for thought. Thank you very much for your patience. Take care. Allah Hafiz.